coming up in this video, I've got a review of Coca-Cola's brand new signature mixers. So if you want to know what all this is about, then please stay tuned. Hey drinks fans, Steve the Barman here and I'm hoping these videos will help you drink, serve and enjoy better quality drinks. So if you like the sound of that, if that's your cup of tea, then please hit that subscribe button and then ring the bell to get notifications every time I set a new video live. Question of the video, as I'm talking about a sort of Coca-Cola, I want to know if you're a Spirit and Coke fan, then what spirit do you drink with Coke? Are you a rum and coke fan, spiced rum, your whiskey, if so, what whiskey, brandy, cognac, vodka, what do you drink with your coke if you're having an alcoholic drink? Let me know in the comments below. Right then, let's crack on with these. Uh, if you're in the industry, then you might have seen these now in sort of the recent months or July, tail end of June, July's uh, trade press. If you're not in the industry, you'll be looking at these and thinking, what the bleeding hell are they? Now, as I mentioned, these are Coca-Cola's brand new signature mixers. Um, I'm going to tell you why they're launched uh, in a minute. I just want to kind of set the scene for you. So no, uh, no cocktail video for you this week. We've got a review of these because I think this is quite an important um, moment or quite an important period in the mid sort of 2019 of the direction the bar scene's heading now as i say let me set the scene uh first couple of days in july uh it's imbibe imbibe live at olympia in the uk it's the big it's the two days it's our biggest bar show of the year um, and i walk in literally kind of just after 10 o'clock when it opens on day one on monday i'm always there for two days i love chatting to people um, and I always kind of do a lap and uh, kind of get there, so get the lay of the land, see who's there. Now, just before I walked in, I caught up with some friends, some distiller friends, and they're outside just before the show kicked off. And they said to me, guys, it's all gin again this year. It's so much gin. Uh, it's all white, it's, but it's all gin. Now, okay, I took that. I was like, all right, yeah, last year, fair enough. It was a lot of gin. However, I walked in and... The one thing on my lap that I kind of noticed, the big two centre stage, centre aisle, the big two trade stands that stood out above everything else because their big high flags were Schweppes and Fever Tree. Now this is important because on both of those stands, there was not one sniff of gin. Coca-Cola were there launching these and they also had their sort of 1783 mixes in there. Okay, the dark muscovado that I mentioned quite a lot. And it did have a couple of tonics, but the emphasis wasn't on that at all. The emphasis was on that and these. Okay, big, huge emphasis on this. The same with Fever Tree stand. Fever Tree had absolutely no tonic water on that stand at all. They had their Madagascan Cola. They had their three ginger ales. So they've got normal ginger ale, um, smoked ginger ale, and an orange ginger ale, I think it is, and their ginger beer. Now, what does that mean? That means that these two industry giants um, in 2019 can see the turning trends uh, in the bar scene at least towards dark spirits okay gin gin is always you know it's grown it's grown and grown and growing is it going to grow any further that is debatable we are going to slight start to see it plateau out now while sales sales are huge we are going to start seeing a lot of spiced rums coming through a lot of whiskies a lot of irish a lot of bourbon coming through now you've got to think the big difference between gin is that you can distill gin uh, literally right now and then in four hours time uh, if i wanted to create a rubbish gin i could sit there and drink it it'll be done the difference with rums and whiskies is they need to be aged and we've been noticing this in the trend in the trade for a long time now there's uh, uk distillers they've been having some rum out there they've been having some gin out there purely to make money and to get the ball rolling what they've actually been focusing on is their rums they've been laid down they've been aged over the last few years and they're starting to come out now uh, and also we're starting to get a big influx uh, from spiced rums from the Caribbean. I think 
Uh, going into 2020, I think rum is just going to, and whiskey is just going to kick on and kick on and kick on. So that's kind of setting the scene. And that's where these come into play. Because as I say, this is Coca-Cola's brand new signature mixer range. They've been developed with four leading uh, bartenders in the UK scene. And they've kind of created different Coca-Colas to go with different spirits in their eyes. So I'm just going to quickly run you through them and then we're going to dive into a bit of detail about each one. We've got a smoky Coca-Cola, we've got a spicy Coca-Cola, we've got a herbal Coca-Cola and we've got a woody Coca-Cola. So I'm going to dive through each of these in turn. Now the other thing I want to do as well is tell you the results of the tasting that I did. The blog post is on my website, uh, it goes into a lot a lot more detail. Um, I lined these up basically with 13 different uh, mixes, meaning that I had 52 samples, which I did over a couple of nights, because that's a lot of rum and a lot of vodka and a lot of whiskey and a lot of Coca-Cola. Uh, but essentially 52 samples, breaking these down to see, in my opinion, what these worked with best, because they've been created for specific things. So, and I did that taste, as I say, it's all detailed on the blog post. Um, but I did the, the test one to four, really sort of scientific um, conditions, you know, all one to four, all done with syringes. Um, and I just wanted to give you that, but I'm gonna quickly give you the brief rundown. So the first one, let me crack on. Right, the first one, this is, um, we'll do it down the close up there. This is the first one, this is number one, and this is the one with smoky notes. This is uh, created by, I've got this, I don't know if you can see this piece of paper here, this is the official tasting notes from the bartender. Um, we've got in the bottle, again, I'll hold that, I'll put that on the, the close-up so you can kind of see this, and I'll read out the official tasting notes for this one. So this is by uh, Max Venning, and it's an intensely aromatic blend with smoky hints. This mix brings nuanced dimension to deep spiced rums, bold premium whiskies. Yang, I can't even say it, Ylang Ylang and Brett Seed, no idea, Dried fruit, uh, which inhabit, inhabit the top layer, are balanced with an elegant base of warm brown spices, namely Peru balsam and amber. So that is the tasting notes for the first one. As I say, I'll quickly run through them. Ylang Ylang and Brett Seed, Peru balsam, oak extract. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the, the last one. Gawaric wood. No idea. Um, now, for me... I'm not a huge fan of smoked things, uh, even in food. You know, I don't like smoked meats and cheese and, and that kind of thing. Um, so, all right, I'm probably not going to be the best person to give a proper uh, formed opinion of this. However, I would class myself as the average palate, uh, mass market kind of appeal, that sort of thing. Actually, the Coke, do you know what? I So when I tried these at Imbibe, I wasn't taken aback, but they were served at kind of room temperature. I've had the chance now to have these all chilled down, served them with ice, served them neat without ice, but or proper chill, and they're actually not too bad. I'll come on to that one in a minute, but I absolutely hated the herbal one at Imbibe, but actually drinking it chilled is a lot different thing. Now, as I mentioned, Coca-Cola's, um, um, what's the word? release uh, press release for this recommends um premium whiskies and darker rums for me now i've tested so the spirits that i tested with i've got the list here where we so whiskies i've done famous grouse buffalo trace uh, teeling irish and southern comfort bold uh, southern comfort black okay so slightly sweeter ish um but not normal southern comfort but southern comfort black rums the plantation od kraken uh, Dead Man Fingers and uh, Pineapple Red Leg. And then I did uh, Toverich um, Vodka. That's just won loads of awards for being a cracking vodka. Uh, Martel VSOP Cognac Red Barrel. So we've got a really nice premium cognac going on. Um, and then we've got Oco 8 uh, Reposado Tequila and Kahlua and Disarona. Because I wanted a couple of liqueurs that you would traditionally serve with Coke as well. So the results for this one. I've got to remind myself because this was a week or so ago now. Famous Grouse was my scotch of choice for this. I didn't think it worked at all. Um, it left the, the grouse too powerful. I, it didn't get on with it at all. Um, Teeling, I thought, worked quite well. Uh, Plantation OD, again, um, I didn't 
think it worked that well. So again, for me, it's kind of going against what Coca-Cola are recommending they serve with this. But the rums, it, I did think it, or the spirits, I did think it worked quite well. With Kraken, I thought it worked very well with. Um, and the Southern Comfort uh, Black as well, I thought it went there. So a little bit of sweetness just to go in there. The one thing I will say, I had to add, with the Pineapple Red Leg, I had to add just a bit more Coke. So take it up to one to five, and then it created a very different drink. And it was actually really, really nice. So for me, does it go with Coca-Cola's recommended serves? No, but, you know, if you're an Irish whiskey fan, Teeling is the rum cast one that I used. I thought that was okay, to be fair. So that's the first one. Now, the second one, uh, this is the spicy one. And probably um, neat, well, I say neat, drinking it straight, Coca-Cola, probably my favourite one. Uh, we are, so we've got lime, ginger, rosemary, jasmine and jalapeno in there. I'm going to read you Coca-Cola's official tasting notes. Uh, this is created by Pippa Guy and Adriana uh, Chia, I think that's how you say the name. Um, with a warm introduction that gives gives way to a fiery finish, this signature mixer is sophisticated in a complex blend. Citrusy lime, ginger, spicy jalapeno, fragrant rosemary and aromatic jasmine combine to create a mixer with considered balance of zest and earthy flavours that pairs beautifully with spiced rums, aged and gold tequilas and spicy or sweet whiskies. All right, so that's the tasting notes for number two. Now, uh, the one thing I'll say there, the, when you drink this or try this neat, the spice really does come off there. I think the ginger works exceptionally well in the Coke, it's very cool, uh, really nice combo. And as I say, probably neat, uh, my favorite one out of the four, really like that. Now, the results um, of the tasting. Whiskies, I have no idea what Coca-Cola were thinking, my palate, all whiskies, even a slight sweetness of the Sun and Comfort Black, I didn't get on with that at all. I did not think that worked at all. So again, for me, Coca-Cola, they've got that wrong. It might be my palate, I don't know. I'm open to other guys, let me know what your thoughts on this as well. But for me, the whiskies didn't go. However, the tequila, the, reposado, the um, Oco 8 Reposado, worked exceptionally well with this. The vodka worked well. The cognac, which I wasn't expecting because of the spice, spice and cognac, worked exceptionally well. I thought that was cracking. Uh, the plantation OD worked very well. The cracking worked well. And the red leg, again, at one to five, to dial down the pineapple a little bit, I thought worked very, very well. But again, coming back to those whiskies, again, I don't think that worked. That might be me. Might need to try it. They say premium whiskies, but you know, Chances are you're gonna you're gonna try this with your grouses and things like that. Yes, we might be needing to go up to sort of thirty pound scotches and things like that. However, entry level, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't overwhelmed with that. Tequila though, tequila and coke. Is it going to be a big hit? I don't know, but it works. It's kind of cool. All right. So we're moving on now to the third one. Now, this herbal one. I tell you, I tried that at Imbibe. If I could have spat it out at Imbibe, I would have done. I really did not get on with this at all. Um, hops, dill seeds, lemongrass. No idea what the last one is. Tagettes. Absolutely no idea. Um, herbal. Think a fizzy kind of not kind of jägermeister -y kind of thing. That's what's kind of going on here. Official blurb about this one, the herbal one. Uh, this is created by Antonio Naranjo. Uh, delicately floral, and crisp and tart mix. This signature mixer was developed to deliver fresh and herbaceous notes for the discerning palate. Uh, balancing refreshing notes of the lemongrass with earthy tones of dill seeds and tagettes. Uh, and it's an inviting mixer with a refreshing and simple profile that pairs beautifully with amber whiskies and most types of rum. Okay, so amber whiskies and most type of rums. Um, is whiskey any other colour than amber? Not sure. But anyway, here we go. So, um, <laughs> as I say, taste wise, uh, chilled down, very different. I kind of actually, you know, it was passable drinking it neat, mixing it. Okay, amber whiskies and tasting notes. Not 
on your life would I ever put that with a whiskey. I thought that I had, don't we, I've gotten them with four, bourbon and Irish, um, the scotch, the grouse, and the sun and comfort, slightly sweeter, black, I, just for me, just did not work with any of them. That floralness with a whiskey, no, a absolutely no, I didn't get that. However, uh, Plantation OD worked very well, cracking worked well, uh, cognac, this is the weird thing with this. I don't get the hops at all in this. The hops for me, uh, kind of non-existent. I don't know what Tajets even are, um, but I do get the, the lemongrass and the dill coming through. However, drinking it with that cognac, a very weird thing happens to me. The only ale that I kind of will drink, I'm not a beer person to say, but the only ale I will drink because I'm Cornish and I kind of like it, it's an Austral tribute. Weirdly, I just had flashbacks of drinking that cognac. Um, kind of, the, I don't know, it must have been the hot. I've no idea, really, really no idea what happened there. But I kind of just had this flashback of St. Austell tribute with that. So for me, the cognac worked all right. Um, tequila, no, absolutely not. I would not have that with that Repsilo tequila at all. And the vodka again, vodka, you know, it's top of it, it's cracking vodka, but it's essentially flavourless in the grand scheme of things compared to the other things. So yes, I can see why that works again. All right. So we've got the three. All right. They're okay. They are okay in the grand scheme of things, but nothing to write home about. All right. Now, the last one, Woody. Toy Story. Woody. Right. The, um, here we go. What's in this one? You need a degree to even work out what these are. Patch, patchouli, balsam, copaiba, basil, vet, vetiver, yuzu. Two, two on there, basil and yuzu. No idea what vetiver, balsam, copaiba are uh, and patchouli. No idea at all, but they're woody. Anyway, Coca-Cola's official blurb. Uh, this is created by Alex, Alex Lawrence. Crafted from subtle blend of earthy patchouli, citrusy yuzu, and aromatic basil, this signature mixer has been has a tart, light, and refreshing profile with hints of warmth. These elements, expertly blended, combine the elegant, elegantly, combine to elegantly enhance the mellow wood and sweet tropical flavours of golden rums and smoky to woody whiskies. All right, so smoky to woody whiskies, whiskies and golden rums that's where we're going for this okay so have we finally got one out of the four that i really 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 like yes i really really did like this again tasting neat i don't know what i can taste you know it's all completely new to me all these weird flavors the gins i've really changed my palate to rums i can pick out certain things in rums with these i have really no idea what is going on in my palate with this but did i like the taste yes um for me out of everything that i tried it with um the only thing that i personally didn't think it worked with drum roll was the plantation od which kind of goes against, well, it doesn't, because they say the sweet tropical flavours of golden rums. OD is kind of a darker rum, all right? So perhaps I should have tried some of these with um, Mount Gay or anything like that, you know, those kind of rums. Perhaps that was my fault. I should have tried them with that. But for the rest of them, uh, all the spiced rums, that worked very, very well with. Uh, the whiskies, again, it worked very, very well with the whiskies, all of those four, so grouse, uh, Soko, uh, Teeling, and uh, Buffalo Trace. Uh, it works very well with the tequila and the vodka and the cognac. But my star of the show, again, brought up to a one to five ratio instead of one to four to dial in the pineapple. My star of the show was the red leg pineapple. I thought that was a cracking, cracking kind of blend. So, what is my conclusion with all this? Um, oh, and one thing I just noticed on there as well. You noticed I didn't mention the Kahlua, the Dead Man's Finger Spiced Rum, or the um, the Disarono, the Amaretto either. Now, for me, uh, that was just pointless. Absolutely pointless. The sweetness in the rums and in the uh, liqueur 
uh, just completely overpowered that and all I was getting really was coke so completely and utterly pointless though uh, those uh, tastings were but the conclusion now I picked these up on offer from Waitrose they're just in Waitrose I mean they haven't even really made it into the trade yet into wholesalers but they were on offer they were four for four pounds so a pound a bottle each on offer they've gone back up since to one pound thirty a bottle so they've gone premium all right now I'm guessing that when these get rolled out to the trade they are gonna be roughly about the 70 to 80 pence mark again I can't you know, I can't give you that for definite. None of my wholesalers have got them in yet. So I don't quite know what the price point is are going to be headed. But my point is, if rum and whiskey is coming, these, yes, these are probably, in all honesty, not created for the likes of me. They're not created for your average village pub or high street bar. They have been created for probably high-end cocktail bars can i see these going down in london in manchester in leeds in bristol yes at your top top sort of cocktail bars can i see these going down on the high streets in local to me in cambridge you know in norwich in ipswich um outskirts of london honestly no i can't i think these are gonna be uh, they're gonna come out with you know coke will get behind them they'll come out with a bit of a boom and then I think you'll slowly see these and slip it away. My point is that again, I think Coca-Cola have missed completely missed the uh, the point here, uh, and Schweppes in general. Because when I'm talking about premiumization, these are premium mixers. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm bla blabbering on. I'm trying to get my point here. I'm trying to say, my point is, Fever Tree uh, when they launched with their tonic waters. Schweppes' tonic water is lovely. It's a really, really lovely tonic water. But Fever Tree launched as a premium. Is it that much better than Schweppes? Not massively, no. But Schweppes felt they had to launch their 1783 as a premium tonic just to get in the game again. Okay? I think they've Coca-Cola Schweppes have missed the point again because I think if rum is coming, if whiskey is coming, the likes of Fever Trees Madagascan Cola, the likes of Lamb and Watts Spiced Cola, and I haven't got a bottle, but Franklin's and Sons 1886 Cola, which is amazing, are gonna steal the march on these because. If, if we're going more premium with our rums and our whiskies, people are going to want that more premium um, kind of serve to go with it. Coca-Cola will argue that that will do the job. And yes, it will do the job. But in the same reason that Schweppes will do the job, people prefer Fever Tree because it gives that more premium kind of vibe. So I think, again... I think Coca-Cola have missed the point. I think I would have loved to have seen them come out to play with a slightly more premium version, even if they just tweaked the recipe a little bit uh, and come up with a few marketing slogans. Fever Tree's Madagascan Cola, I know full well, is just because where Fever Tree have set themselves, it's just going to smash it on in the consumer market. It really is. It's a lovely cola. Um, Franklin's and Sons haven't got that marketing power, but for my money, it's actually a better cola. But Franklin's and Sons just seem to be lagging behind and getting their products out to the general consumers. Lamb and Watt are getting there. I've got I've got a sneaking suspicion this is going to come out next year properly. But I just I I don't see it. If you're creating something for maybe 50, 100 bars in London, maybe you know maybe 10 bars in Leeds, I I don't I really don't get it. I really don't see the point of it. Coke, I would have loved to have seen you. Play ball with a premium cola, um, playing down the middle, you would have absolutely smashed it, gone head to head with um, with Fever Tree. Even your glass iconic bottles, people, yes, it is premium, but people still associate that with normal Coca Cola, and you're going to need something to hit that premium. So that's been my review of that. Would I buy them again? I've got another sort of eight bottles of each down there to go through. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm going to drink them. The spicy one, for me, probably the spiced rums, the woody one. I, for me, I, it's just going to go back to that. And if I've got a really nice rum, then it's going to be Fever Trees Mediterranean or Franklin's and Sons if 
I can get it. So that's been my review of that. I know some bartenders are going to take the opposite opinion. I say some bartenders are really excited about this, but I just think Coca-Cola have put their money and effort into something pretty pointless, to be fair. That's been my review of Coca-Cola's um, signature mixers. I'll be back at you next week with not only a gin review, not only a rum review, but we're coming cocktails again next week. So that's been me. I'll catch you soon.